It's Saturday morning, and I hope this video finds you well. Ever since the patch dropped, and a couple of days prior to the patch drop, and I said this in my original video talking about will New World, in terms of the developers at Amazon Gaming Studios, be able to blend the two of PvE and PvP? And I said you cannot incentivize PvP. And ever since they announced that they were going to be giving uh, PvPers a little bit of extra luck for gathering items as supposedly a way to incentivize other people to PvP, there have been non-stop forum posts by PvE people just complaining every single day. Non-fucking-stop, man. And it comes to the point of Originally, Amazon was creating a PvP survival game. And then they said that they were going to add more PvE to the game, so the game ended up getting pushed back. So that they had more time to add more to the game in terms of PvE. But it wasn't going to be a full-out fledged PvE game with just sprinkles of PvP. As you know, most of the end game content, like in most MMOs, becomes repetitive. There's only so many times that you can do the dungeons, there's only so many times that you can do the same content. You know, once you've done the storyline, that's pretty much it. And this is a perfect example of why you don't mix the two schools of thought. To the point where you literally have people telling other people in the forums that Amazon thinks that PVEers are literally second class citizens. As this person has, says, the new PVE underclass and why did the developers choose a side? And this is a long, like, art. This, look at this. This person just wrote a whole wall of text. But it's not just the wall of text. I mean, you will find numerous threads like this talking about literally the same thing that they gave pvpers some bonus for luck for flagging and it's not that hard to understand it's like if you're willing to risk being attacked by another player while you're gathering well then you do deserve a little bit more of a reward for flagging and most pv and this is what i said if you put anything if this was 15%, if it was 20%, if it was 10%, these people would still be losing their minds. Because you cannot incentivize players who just don't want to compete. You cannot incentivize non-competitive players. The moment that you put anything behind a PvP wall, the tears will come out. I mean... Let's, let's just look, look at this first paragraph. It says, I don't understand why the devs had to create winners out of the PvP minority and losers out of the PvE majority. It's like, it's just so hard just to even get through the first sentence when you think about how much of an L we as a PvP community have taken. We went from a game that was supposed to be full loot to a flagging system. That is a huge L. We went from having a, a justice system and a law system and having other systems that were in the game prior to the 180 that they did. We lost all of that. We lost the ability to adequately rank up our gear from killing other players. We lost out on the extra XP. Now we're forced to do all this repetitive pve nonsense we got to skin all these mobs we got to mine ore to no end and kill and go through dungeons over and over and over again for a watermarking system and PVEers <clears throat> want to pretend like none of this happens like all of this content like we're all for all this content we're sitting here we want to sit here and do all do all this pve leveling from 1 to 60 most of what i mean even from my from from my perspective i was looking forward to the low level pve and for for the low level excuse me the low level pvp and i didn't really get all that much of it in the beginning sure and then as people basically walked away from the game because it was missing a lot of the the content it was very boring and of course a lot of people especially on my server 
didn't flag. And so a game that was designed with a lot of content to be dynamic in the form of it being created by the player base. Instead, we got a bunch of copy pasta mobs and areas with very boring fetch quests and kill quests that you did, you know, to no end. So the, the person goes on to say, he says, if you think giving a massive elite benefit to one group is not a massively disenfranchising the other group, then you are mistaken. If the tables were turned and PVE had a 10% luck bonus and 30% luck bonus, so then how would the PVPers react? And it's like, shit, we wouldn't even care. We wouldn't care if you gave PVE because we would just do the PVE for the X for the luck. And we'd be like, shit, fine, I'll go do that. I'll go do, go do the PVE content if it makes it easier for me to go PVP. Sure, why not? But PVEers are some of the most entitled players in this game and in many other games for that matter but in this game particular like the toxicity is heavily one-sided for the most part most pvpers will like just give us our own servers give us our own server we'll go there we'll mind our own business we'll go give us a free-for-all server and leave us the fuck alone and amazon gaming studio said well we can't do that because it'll force us to have to you know develop the game in two different areas for the two different people for the two two different groups because pvpers are going to want content specifically for pvp and the pve community is going to want content for the pveers in that direction and so they said we're going to keep you know the two groups together and try to give content that would be beneficial to both and it doesn't work because these people are just full of toxicity and they spew it all over the forums to no end as the person goes on to say he says the potato chip would fall right out of the aghast open mouth of the pvp players there would be a wailing and a gnashing of teeth of biblical proportions pvp players always carry on about how the game was designed initially as a pvp game and it was that's what sold many of us in fact the lead developer said that literally the spine of the game is the player versus player interaction and to actually remove the player versus player interaction would literally neuter the game and that's effectively what it's what it, what it has done a lot of the mediocre pve content that was added was to appease the PVEers who they tried to cater to because there were many people who literally would type into the YouTube comment, they were like, hey, this game doesn't have anything for me. That's not fair. Even though the game was designed for PvP, there was a, a wailing and a gnashing of the teeth from the PvE community. And so the developer said, fine, we'll add more content and we'll go in a bit of a different direction. The Care Bears who were there during the alphas that tested this game in the beginning, that QQ'd on the forum, it's too hard, they're spawn camping us. And this is what we got. We got a half-baked PvP, PvE MMO, and it does neither well. And this is what you get, as they say, for not staying in your lane. For a, for a game that was heavily, and you can just look at the game and you can see that the game was heavily geared towards PvP. From capturing all the different towns. And the PvEers never sit here and be like, hey, you know, thank you, PvPers for capturing these towns. You get bonuses for PvPers going out and capturing towns. You get faster gatherings. You get decrease in spending for different things. You get more XP. But no one says thank you to the PvPers. It's just entitlement. It's just sheer entitlement on the part of PV, PvEers towards the PvPers. The PvPers are the ones that are doing the heavy lifting in terms of taking the towns. His PvP players always carry on about this, and it goes on to state um, the game was advertised as a launch when people put their money down and about the state of the game now. And the developer can take the game whatever direction that they want. So says New World made a clear choice at the start of the game and that, they would, that there would be no PvP servers and that this would be a game where the two play styles would coexist. There was no hint that one group would be preferred over the other. Yeah, right. <laughs> it says, for the most part, the game development seemed to have been quite successful 
in this balance up until now. And of course, one of the big issues is if something overperforms in PvE, nobody cares because the mobs aren't going to be on the forums writing posts like this saying that, hey, these people are doing way too much damage. It typically in PvP is where you see the imbalances of the combat system. You don't see the imbalance of the combat system all that much in a PvE community. And it's because at the end of the day, PvEers don't care if the content is easy or if they're over or if they're overpowered. But in PvP is where you typically will see balance issues and where balance, of course, needs to be adjusted. And as such, they balance the game around PvP, which you always should do because it's easier on the back end to fix PvE. Do the PvE mobs do too much damage? You just type in a couple of numbers here and you reduce the amount of damage, you reduce the HP, and voila. So if there are changes that need to be made, it's much harder to balance PvP than it is PvE. Because if it overperforms in PvE, not many people are going to complain. But if something is adamantly broken, like for example, Life Staff, then of course you're going to hear about it from the PvP community because it's ridiculously overpowered. It goes on to state, on the PvP gameplay side, however, the usual rot was starting to set in. can tell this person is uh, slightly biased. On quite a few occasions, the open world PvP aspect was starting to turn into gank squads roaming the countryside looking for solo duo players to pounce on them. And I was like, hey, maybe these people were uh, role playing, right? Maybe they're doing a little exotic role playing as bandits. Did you ever think of it that way? Maybe these were actually PvEers who were role-playing as being marauders and they were rampaging the countryside of the weak men and taking their spoils. But nobody ever nobody ever looks at things that way. It says now at least for a short time, there'll be will be more of it. PvP gameplay at its finest. I did though, I think on one occasion, that it was mildly amusing seeing 12 PvP guys steamroll one oblivious Chad picking up an ore node. With the PvP leader commenting in local chat, hey buddy, this ain't no Christmas special. And it's like, where do you get this stuff, man? It says, but this is also ultimately the problem. Solo duo players uh, flagged in an open world going out gathering resources will inevitably be ganked once too often by the roaming death squads, and then they won't flag again. The solo duo players will eventually realize that the new PvP preferred nature of the game means that they really, excuse me, means that they are really up against it. And at this time, move on to another game. Most of us don't want to play a game where we are looking over our shoulders all the time. And it's funny because when you actually watch the i'll leave the my video that i did above when you actually listen to what the lead developer wanted that's exactly what he wanted he wanted you to think that at every moment that you were playing this game that there was it was a a dangerous island to be on and that you could be ganked by the mobs you can be attacked by the mobs or you could be attacked by an opposing faction member but these people just don't understand that they imagine that you can just stroll on in to the opposing faction side and start picking our flowers. And we say, no, fuck that shit. And we rightly push you out of our areas as, as such. This is what, this is the whole point of having factions in a PVP game and capturing areas, capturing towns. But for the PVE community, this whole immersion is lost. And in fact, the whole concept breaks immersion of the game so badly to see individuals not flagged in a game where you have the story of three different factions that oppose each other and war with each other, but you imagine that you can be joined and allied with this other side of the faction and kind of stroll on into our towns and actually and nothing happened to you. As if in a real scenario or even in a role play scenario that you would not be put to death. And this is, this is the problem with PvE community, at least with these PvE Care Bears that we have nowadays, where they want to role play, but they only want to role play their end. They want to pretend like they're the, they're the bandit, they're the marauders killing NPCs. 
But when New World says, well, we're going to give you that real, real shit, they're no like, they don't like that because it's too competitive for them. And they're looking to compete. As he goes on to say, he says, curiously on the forums, I see a few comments from PvP players seeing, see, this is what PvP, PvE players get for not letting us have PvP servers from the start. This is interesting comment from the two points of view. Firstly, this is a real venom that PvP players have towards PvE players. What is this about? This is definitely not reciprocated. You've got to be fucking out of your mind. You got to be. I can't tell you how many toxic PvE threads are created every single day. And it's like one person will make a threat and another person will make the exact same thread right after that person makes another thread. And he'll just like regurgitate the same shit. Like I can't. There's so many of these luck based threads about pvp it's just fucking crazy as he goes on to say pve players are nearly all indifferent to pvp players secondly the pvp players are well aware that pve players have been royally shafted somehow to the pvp players this is massive percentage luck changes is their revenge there is something rather unsettling about this about the mindset of some of the PvP players. It's a very real us versus them. This fucking guy, man. This is like, you gotta be kidding me. And the devs have handed them the perfect opportunity to tell everybody about it. He goes on, <laughs> he goes on to say, because I can see in the future for this game for me. I log on, I see a dungeon run I like to I like to go on being organized, but it's advertised as PvP only. I logged on, I lost. I log on and I check, I'm wearing my luck gear, but wait a minute, the PvP players are effectively carrying four more luck gear pieces with them, with their 10% luck bonus. I logged on, I lost. I log on and I go into the wilderness and flag for their 30% gathering bonus. I get ganked within 20 minutes by a roaming death squad. I logged on. I lost. It's only for so long that I can live with a losing proposition. It's a compelling reason not to play. The devs have created two horse races out of PvE and PvP when they didn't even have to go to the race at all. For a PvP preference decision like this to be made, it does tell us something about the PvP mindset of the, dev of the devs. Or at least some of them, leaving us to ponder exactly what PvP preferred changes will be made to the game in the future. Maybe this is really just a start. What happens next is we don't comply with this new luck directive and begin to PvP our little hearts out. Is it really to make obvious winners and losers out of the different groups in the player base? Who decided that one playstyle was more important than the other? Who decided to force one particular playstyle on the entire player base? Who decided to tear up the PvE PvP balance that people understood they were getting when they bought the game? There is a fundamental question here of impartiality, fairness, and freedom of choice without any form of coercion. I now appeal to those devs who favor a balanced approach to the game. I urge you to rise to the occasion and fight against the oppression of PvP preferences. This is a pivotal moment in the game. The restoration of PvE PvP balance happens now or never. So very soon, unless things change, I will play less and less. After just one day, I already have that feeling of, why bother when I log in now? By change, I don't mean a fixed that tinkers about the edges by reducing the percentages for PvP preferred luck. I mean total elimination of PvP preference. I've played hundreds of hours in this game. I have 200 in every aspect, fishing, furnishing weapon smithing which are both at 150 i was taking the time 
to set myself up for years to come in this game. I group up in a few, with a few friends who also don't and won't flag PvP. And they agree that their future gameplay is now at best uncertain. The enthusiasm that we had for the game is evaporating. Clearly, the New World team has created something very special in the MMO market. Quite literally, this game is the real McCoy I've been waiting for for years for something like this. You are right on track. I even bought another copy for a friend to play. We finally get there, and one gameplay change just turned the whole thing upside down. Massively disappointing. Woo! That is some fucking drama, bro. That is some drama. Like, just reading this shit is just full of drama. You can tell by reading this. And this is the sheer level of toxicity that we have to deal with in this game. In the 20 plus years of playing MMOs, I have never read a more toxic thread from a community that claims to want inclusivity. And yet they are some of the most entitled people that you will ever come across. And it was a huge mistake for Amazon to cater to these people because this is what you get and you're only going to get more of it. It's like, God forbid they do anything for the PVP community and there is hell to pay. I can't tell you how many I quit threads like you just sit here and you type in I quit and there are so many people. It's like, if you don't do this, I'll quit. If you don't give me mounts, I'll quit. If you don't reverse with the changes that you made, I'll quit. If you don't do this, I'll quit. And it's like, my God, and like 90% of them are from the PVE community. Where are my mounts? You're taking too long to put mounts in the game. I'm a quit. And these are the people that you cater to. And this is what you get in return. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here and I'll catch you next time.